Hi everyone, welcome back to Everything Spice. Well, as you can see, I got all my prep station working and today I've decided to do a couple of things. One of them, I'm gonna show you a meatloaf recipe wrapped in bacon, Ooh, fabulous. But to go with my meatloaf dinner, I am going to make rolls because bread and meatloaf just go together like peanut butter and jelly, my friends. So I'm making just a straight white bread that I'm gonna form into rolls, okay? And I got it from the book. I told you I have tons and tons of baking books, which I will feature on my show, on my channel. This is Baking by James Peterson. Love it, he is a genius when it comes to bread. Though, I do have quite a bit of baking books that I can show you, they're geniuses as well. And it is a white bread, straight dough, okay? So to start, with this dough, I have one and a half cups of warm water. I nuked it in the microwave for 30 seconds, so it has just the right temperature. If it's too hot, it'll kill yeast. I have my bulk yeast, shake, 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 okay? And I put one and a half teaspoons of dry active yeast. Not any brand will do. I have a preference, but I'm not telling you. And what happens with this is once you look, what happens with it? Come over here. Come to the bowl. See, it's starting to foam. It's about a 10 minute process that the author is asking for. So while we're waiting for our yeast to proof, as they call it, we're gonna start on our dough. We need four cups of flour. Now I have my big old flour bowls. I have, this is pure white flour. And then I have a whole wheat, the whole wheat white flour. Yeah, whole wheat white flour, that's it. All right, but you can use straight flour, bleach flour, whatever you want, depending on what you have in your kitchen, okay? But I'm just gonna add it. Now let's see, this is how we do it. We scoop it up and level it off. I don't know if you could see it. Let me put one in and then I'll show you. Let me lower it just a smidge or higher it just a smidge, I should say. Sorry, my hand's in the way. All right, here we go. Just trying to work it so you can see it. See me now? There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do, scoop out what we need. This is the second cup and we level it off. Level it, okay? Has to be leveled. Leveled number two. We need four. So third time's a charm. And then for the fourth cup, I am using my whole weight. I don't use pure whole wheat, but if you want to, if you're more into using whole wheat the whole way, it's a denser product. I like it because it gives it a little extra oomph. So that's why I use it. All right, so three white to one whole wheat white, okay? Then what we gotta do is we're gonna put our salt in. And basically it's just salt, it's flour, it's water, it's yeast. It's such a simple recipe, but the smell of bread in your house is so incredible when the oven does its job. So one teaspoon, okay, one teaspoon of salt. And because I have all this yeast on it, I'm gonna use this one teaspoon instead. Salt right here, there we go, one teaspoon. I'm gonna put it directly into the flour. All right, and then we're gonna use our handy dandy whisk. All the ingredients go in, zhuzh it up. Very important to mix completely. You don't want parts of it to have salt and parts of it not to have salt. You want it to combine completely, okay? All right, that's perfect though right there. Right here. All right, so by the time that's done, just adding all your ingredients, that's it. This is as basic as it gets, but it's so not basic a wooden spoon going. All right, here we go. All we're doing is combining. Okay. Let this go in. And I like to make a well. And a well is just pushing the flour aside so you have a space. See if you could see it. Maybe I should bring the camera to you so you can see it. Come over here, my friends. Come to the bowl. So here we go. Let me show you. See the well? And you could do this for pastas too. A lot of them do it with a pasta. I'm gonna take our mixture. Beauty is fabulous. And we're gonna mix it in, okay? 
then you just combine the two with your wooden spoon. Okay, just like this. And it comes together in shaggy, a shaggy dough, as they call it. But it's gonna be so fabulous together. Now, depending, and I've said this before to you, the smell is incredible of yeast. Depending on the humidity in your house, or lack thereof, if it's like winter time, summer here, so it's a little bit more humidity in the air, you might need more or less water, okay? So here we go. So this is it, this is what it looks like. And you know what? It looks like a hot mess, right? It isn't. It's exactly how it's supposed to look. Exactly, my friends. Let's just try it just to see. Look at that, it's forming perfectly. See, and you might need to add just a little bit more, but I don't know, I'm not really feeling it that I'm gonna need more water for this. I'm thinking it might turn out really well, just the way it is. Let me give it some of this flour. But I'm gonna need some flour, so I'm gonna leave this one here. And then I'm going to sprinkle on the board, just like that. And then dump it on. I'm gonna make these rolls. All I feel is like this warmth from the warm water. So awesome. And I'm gonna use this bowl later so that I can rise the dough in it. Okay. Let's get this one out of the way. Now, I'm gonna together, squish it together. Okay. And this forms the bread okay and like I said depending on the relative humidity in your area you might need some water to do this but let me try it first before I say yeah, I need some water I don't really think I do it's wet enough it's gonna rise and get softer too while it goes along so let's just try it out Kind of feels like it might need a little more water. So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sprinkle it. I know I'm doing it hand form. You could do this in the food processor. In fact, the recipe calls for the food processor, but I'm not doing it in the food processor. A little sprinkle because you can add, but you cannot take out. So you don't wanna make a mistake of adding too much. So we're gonna go by that and I believe that's enough. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this, see what you do, you go like this. And last time, my first video I did, I tried to show you, but the camera was not where it should have been to show you how to knead this dough. But this is how you knead dough, okay? You push it and push it away. You take it, grab it, push it away. Take it, grab it, push it away. The whole time just pressing, right? And eventually it comes together as a smooth ball, but it's effort. If you wanna do it in a food processor, it can make it easier for you. But I think that try it at least once like this method so that you have an idea of how it feels in your hand versus relying on the kitchen appliances. Although it's cool to have the kitchen appliances and if you have arthritis, by all means, use all the tools in your toolbox to make bread making easier for you. I have this bread machine right here. I, I hardly ever use it, I have it. But if you have a bread machine, it'll do all the kneading for you. It'll do the rising for you. And so you don't have to. So, you know, bread making, it's a science, but it's also an enjoyment. And if you can cut the corners and make the shortcuts that make it easier so that you actually want to do bread, then you should do that then you should do that. But I'm showing you the hand method because, I don't know, because I like it. And that's it. And what I'm gonna do is continue to knead the dough until it comes into a soft, small bowl, right? I'm gonna keep kneading this until it looks smoother. And then I'll show you what we do on the other side of this. Thank you for joining me. I'll be right back.
I want to show you another option too for kneading. You can put all your ingredients in step by step according to the recipe. And you can also let your stand mixer do the kneading as well if you have the dough hook. So if you don't have a food processor, this is another way of getting the dough kneaded properly. So just giving you a couple of options. You can do it by hand, you can do it by food processor, or you can do it by a stand mixer. All right, I'll show you on the other side what it looks like. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shape it, which we shaped it really nicely, into a ball, okay? I have a clean pan and I sprayed it with some cooking spray. We're gonna put it in, okay? And make sure that the top has a nice glistening spray on it so it doesn't dry out. I sprayed the plastic wrap and I'm gonna put it over it like this. I have the oven light on and I've had it on for a little bit so it has some heat. I got a kitchen towel, a clean kitchen towel specific for this. Let me fold it up like that, okay? And I'm gonna put this in the oven for two hours. It needs the two hours to rise, okay? And it's gonna rise in the bowl and then we will show you the next step. I will show you the next step in how I'm going to shape these into rolls for tonight's dinner. So join me on the other side. Thank you for joining me for Everything Spice. I'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. The two hours is up. Let's reveal the final product. There we go. It has risen nicely. And what we're gonna do, go like this, punch it down, flatten it out. Take a lot of aggression out <laughs> when you think about it. All right, let's pound it out. And what we're gonna do is divide it into the rolls that we need. So I'm gonna pound it out here and that releases any air pockets because you don't want any air in it. It's very warm from the oven. The oven wasn't on, it was just the air, the light, okay? So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna try to divide it equally to get about 12. I got a pan, I got a pan here and it's lightly dusted with cornmeal on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this even. See how many I can get out of this. One. Let's see. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna try to get 12. If there's any smaller ones, I'm gonna take some of this off and add it. That way it, this is too much on that end. Any extra one, you can just try to add it because you wanna have as even of a product as possible. Little here, little there, little there. So you have even 12. All right, just 12, that's all we're doing. If you need to double the recipe, you can certainly do that. Okay, so let's try it out. Let's say, right? Right? Like that. Pinch it. Pinch it on the ends, right? Pull it. Roll it, roll it, roll it until it goes into a ball. Then you have this even roll right here. Okay? Keep going with that. So you're gonna fold it into each other fold it into itself like this right just like that okay and then roll it you want to get them as even as possible or as uniform as possible and that's what they look like okay some like i said are going to be bigger than others because of the dough and how many you actually did so like that roll it roll it roll it you're cupping it, you're cupping it and rolling it, okay? You're not flattening it. Your very light hand, you're cupping it, okay? Very light hands, how you're doing it, see? And that creates that evenness that you're looking for, all right? So what I'm gonna do is get all of these rolled out and I'll be, I'll show you what they look like on the pan. All of my rolls are shaped and this is what they look like. They smell 
amazing beautiful magnificent and even and that's the basic thing what you want to do you want to make sure that they're all even so that they cook even now they do have another rise time and whether you make regular bread with it because it is a white bread a basic white bread recipe or you make them into these rolls you're going to have to rise them a second time so i have the oven light still on no oven on, just the oven light, and that gives enough residual heat for them to rise again. So in one hour, they're gonna go into the oven and they are going to rise in this pan. Maybe even touch a little bit, you never know, because they are kind of close together, but they are separate enough that they have room. You need to give them room. Now, if you wanted to make one big bread, you could certainly do that as well. You would just pat it out and then jelly roll style put it into a bread pan for that shape and that form and another hour it would go into the oven to rise again because it is a basic recipe so one hour and I'll see you on the flip side where we put them into the oven and get them ready for their close-up stay tuned all right this is it here's the rolls now I'm just gonna add one egg and some water I'm gonna brush it on the rolls we're gonna put it in the oven. I have 400 degrees. And I would keep checking them about half hour. If you need to lower it, depending on the brownish, do that. And, and turn, turn the pan halfway through, okay? And I will show you the final reveal. Stick with me. All right, ta-da! The rolls are done. Bring it to you right there. There they are, perfecto. And the last thing that I like to do with the rolls is I take some butter. It's like a finisher, okay? I'm taking butter, and this is what I do. I just put some butter all over the tops of them as they just come out of the oven, so they're super, like, warm still. But it takes it, and it softens up the rolls, and it makes them really pretty, too. So that's what I'm gonna do. Do all of these. These are like little artisan breads. They look so cute. Okay, and that's gonna go perfect with my meatloaf dinner that I just started. So, and they're glistening, glistening, so fragrant. The smell in your house is like, just like a bakery. So good. They are gonna be perfect though. Okay, here we go. And if you want to, you can put a little bit of salt on top. I kind of like that idea. Okay, so a little bit of butter, because butter, butter, butter makes it better, better, better. Right? Here's the book. Baking by James Peterson. It's his recipe. Okay. I'm going to put just a smidge of salt as well as a finisher on top. And if you have any type of salt issues, blood pressure issues, and you don't need salt in your life, or very little because of your doctor recommending it don't put the finisher on top okay but do put it inside the bread because the bread will taste garbagey if you do not have salt in it just so you know it is a huge difference when you don't have salt in your bread all right so this is it these are my rolls i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please like subscribe and share so we can grow together and thank you so much for joining me for everything spice have a great Morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. Be safe.